Making sales online can be difficult, especially if you're a local or a service-based business, right? You're used to a sales model that usually involves people walking into your store or maybe you going out to a networking meeting. Maybe you're at, your, at a breakfast meeting, a chamber of commerce meeting. You're meeting people and you're trying to prospect and hand out cards. But that's, that's how you're going to survive, in your business. That's survival mode. If you want to thrive in your business, then you have to find a system for selling your services on the internet. And in today's Owen Video Live, we're going to be talking with Marcus Campbell. He's a direct selling expert, personal friend of mine. This guy crushes and we're going to be talking about how to have more effective sales conversations in person and on your web pages so that more of your customers can find you online call you email you walk into your store and do more business with you stay tuned it's owen video live owen I'm Owen Video, and I help amazing companies create videos that create customers with video sales funnels. And if you want to grow your business with video, subscribe to my channel right now. Let's get started with today's video. Hey, welcome to Owen Video Live, the first ever episode of its kind. I'm your host, Owen Video, and I teach service-based companies how to make sales and get customers with online video. Today, we've got a very special guest expert in the house, my good friend, Marcus Campbell. Marcus Campbell has been a uh, affiliate, has been in internet marketing for 18 years. He runs a, he sold multiple seven figures on the internet. He sold multiple seven figures on the internet. Let that sink in. Uh, he's an expert at writing sales letters and direct response copy. We also went to high school together, reunited uh, after years of being separated. Marcus Campbell, great to have you on the show. Cue the audience applause. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> Mark, it's uh, it's great to have you on the show. And uh, by the way, yeah, no, it's big. He's big. He's big, folks. Uh, uh, by the way, if you'd like to subscribe to the show, if you want to get the notes and and uh, uh, learn more about the show, type five in the comment section. That's right. Give me five. Uh, our chat bot. I don't think our chat bot is connected right now. Uh, but we'll go back and we'll respond individually to all the comments. If you want to subscribe, we'll make sure that you do that. Marcus Campbell, great to have you here. Hey. Uh, take a moment. Tell us a little bit about your business and your background. Sure. Yeah, I started um, back when I used to be a magician, which you knew me back in those days in high school. Yep. And um, I used to do magic, and I was looking for a way to like ramp up the sales. I would I would put an ad in the local magazine, and I'd get you know like three or five sales or something. Yeah. Um, and then I'd go do the jobs, and then I was like, okay, well, why can't I get more? Because it cost me two hundred bucks or one hundred and seventy to run the ad. And I got a hundred bucks a show, so just some profit, but I wanted more. And so I started looking into direct response copywriting, mm -hmm. and I literally changed the wording on the ad. Same price, same magazine, same everything. Changed the wording, 30 shows a month versus five. I was like, whoa, what the heck, dude? I'm making three grand off the same ad that I was making 500 bucks off of. And so I started looking into direct response, um, and I, I kind of got the bug for it, right? I really... I really enjoyed it. I was like, direct response is cool. You can yeah. write things and people will buy stuff. And so I got into um, mailing out letters. I would mail letters for website design. Uh, got into magazine advertising a little bit with uh, network marketing magazines and uh, sales magazines and things like that. Yeah. Um, and I was always intrigued by it. I was like, wow. I mean, literally, the difference between words on paper is the difference between big bank account and little bank account. Um, and that goes into like how much people sell too. Like I remember when I used to sell uh, computers in a, a store, I would sell the computers and I would get crazy results. The so people would come in and they'd sell like one a week and I was selling like five a day. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for, yeah. yeah. And I remember one day, like the manager comes from like the all hail, you know, when you work in a job like that and it's like, Hey, Bob Jones is coming. And everyone's like, Bob Jones, Bob Jones. It's like, uh, the Bugs Bunny where they're like, Leopold, Leopold, Leopold. <laughs> and uh, everyone's flipping out because I had made the sale where I got like 20 grand worth of computers to one guy yeah. with all the warranties in one night. 
And so everyone was flipping out about it. And I got 200 bucks. And I was like, it's time to change careers. Yeah. Oh, my brand God. And, and, and get more than 200 bucks. Oh, yeah. Um, That's brutal. And so, you know, I learned about like the wording. Like, what do you say to someone to get them to buy? What do you say to someone to, to get them interested? How do, you, how do you treat people? Because in our culture, sales is looked at as like a bad thing dirty word where it's like, Oh, he's going to try to sell me. Yeah. When in actuality it's I'm helping you. Yeah. If I believe in my product. I believe it's going to get you the result. Then I have no problem selling the heck out of it because Hey, it's going to help you. Um, yeah. And yeah. We, if, if you start from that, we've seen that, we've seen that a lot, uh, in this, uh, in, especially in this new age of internet marketing, right. With all of these new products and these new services and, uh, the, the, uh, explosion of health and wellness coaches, uh, the mm -hmm. ability to become uh, an expert in a, in a given nutrition or workout. I mean, uh, it's it's tough. I mean, you've got to take someone who, who you know needs this and they've even maybe expressed to you that they need it, but helping them to overcome their own personal barriers in saying yes and buying that product can be a chore. And as salespeople, and if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a small business owner, you are a salesperson, uh, then uh, uh, you, you, know, you have to learn some of those skills that gently move your prospect from uh, liking you to actually putting up their credit card uh, and and doing business uh, with you, and that's that's sort of the conversations uh, that you've mastered. I've mastered. I've been in that situation as you uh, working in previous jobs where everyone's doing like I worked for a video company, right? Where we would go, uh, we would it was like a video mapping, like Google Maps with video type of thing, and I you know these other guys were doing like you know like one video a week, and I'm doing like seventeen. Right. And so they're yeah. bringing me on to like train the company, right. And to show them how to do it. And at the end of the day, I'm still making pennies, right. I'm still yeah. making pennies. And it's like, well, we got to take this skill to the next level. And that's exactly why you're here. want to say what's up to our audience, checking us out on Facebook and on YouTube. My man, Ariel Vieira, the urbanist joining us. Great to see you. The Apostle Tamar. Apostle, I'm so glad you're here watching us on the Candid Cam. Uh, so glad you're here, uh, Apostle Tamar, because I think this today's episode is really going to apply to you. Uh, Willie Rodriguez is logging in. Willie is, uh, is a very talented young salesman, somebody I'm kind of taking under my wing a little bit in my personal life and, and uh, just want, wanting to see him grow. Uh, Graham Hoffman as well watching us. Who's out there on Facebook? We got Joe Eves, my man, on, on uh, YouTube. Excuse me. Lily Tree, Dan Norton logging in, and Rosh Silers. We got Harley Pebbly. Uh, and Music Nerd Revolution. Glad you guys are here. If you have questions on sales, sales letters, and direct selling, and you got questions for Marcus Campbell or myself, ask them in the comment section below. Uh, we're going to dig in right now. Marcus, what do you think is the most important part of the sales process? What's that, 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 that first thing that needs to be considered above all things? I would say the first thing, hands down, is know your audience. Uh, you want to know where these people are at and where they're coming from. Far too many people start out and they say, well, you know, I got this great product and this, it's all about the product. Everything's the product, the product, the product. Right. And what people don't realize is if you think it's about your product, I want you to go put a post on Facebook and say, I'm going to give you a dollar, right? And see how good you could sell a free dollar. Yeah. And okay. I guarantee you're going to be shocked because you're not that good at it, right? These people are going to have objections. They're going to say, what about this? So it's not necessarily the product. Now, I'm not saying you know, go hawk a bunch of crappy products. No, not at all. Make sure your product's good. Make sure it's awesome. Um, but don't start with that. Start with where the customer's at, right? What is, what is bringing them into me? And what I like to do is what uh, the late Corey Rudel used to say. He said, educate, inform, and sell more, right? Sales is about education. It's about teaching people, hey, this is what you need. This is why you need it. This is why it's going to help you, right? If I go to someone who's looking to sell their house, Right. You look at it and if they come to me, they got their arms crossed and they're like, OK, every realtor says they're going to sell my house. Every realtor wants three percent or six yeah. percent or whatever. They're all a bunch of scammers. And, you know, my my Aunt Judy will probably do it free. Yeah. And this is their mindset. Yeah. And we don't think about that. But the thing you want to do, I don't want to come at you and say, let me sell your house and blah, blah, blah. I want to say, look, Owen, you got this house. Right. It's in San Diego. I know San Diego real estate. Now, here's the thing. Okay, I can actually find out exactly what your house is worth mm -hmm. to the penny within seven days. And there's no obligation to you. So we're going to get people in. Watch. We're going to get them in. 
They're going to come in. You're going to have a ton of people in your house. They're going to bid the price above what you're asking. Mm -hmm. Guarantee it. It happens every time. Now, the way we do this is with the XYZ process. Mm -hmm. Now, the XYZ process works this way. Now, this and that by the time you're done, they're going to be like, give me what you have to, to buy. I, I yeah. want to buy right now. Where do I sign? Because yeah. what you're doing is you're leading them through a process and you're taking them from a different place in the buying process instead of, you know, hey, what's this Marcus guy going to teach me? What's Owen going to show me? There's a million people with Lamborghinis and everything. Why should I listen to you? Right. Um, and what we're doing is we're, we're taking their defenses down by teaching them, by saying, hey, look, this, this is the deal. What you've been taught about sales is wrong. And the reason it's wrong is because you're taught to sell from your heels. You're taught to go for the throat. You're taught to, you know, always be closing, them. right? Always be exactly. closing, right? ABC, brother. All a coffee is for closers. And those things yeah. are fun colloquials. They're fun, like, they're fun sales culture things to reference, right? Bumper stickers. Uh, yeah. But at the end of the day, yeah, sales has tra changed and it's changed dramatically. And you've got to be. Uh, on top. All right. So I want to sort of just recap because I'd really like for today's uh, Gord Eisman is saying great topic. Uh, we do have some questions coming in. So I want to dig into those. So the, the first thing is the most important part of sales is know the customer and to know their needs. And then that next part, I think what I want to dig into more is that walk them through a process. Uh, that's, mm -hmm. that's extremely important. We have a great question coming in from Ariel Vieira, who's asking us on Facebook. Uh, how do you know uh, the best customers to approach. And let's just assume, uh, let's just assume that this is for a service based company, right? Selling a service, uh, to, to the business community. Maybe it's social media, maybe it's marketing, consulting, something like that. But in, uh, like, how do we go about targeting the right customers? Marcus Campbell. Good question. Um, actually a lot of people have this misconceived and when it comes to targeting your customers, a lot of people think they're stuck in a box. They're like, okay, well, I can only go for like middle-aged housewives who have six kids, right? And they're like, that's where I'm at. That's, that's my demographic. Yeah. When in actuality, who's the owner of the business? You are. Right. Who chooses who the customer is? You do. Mm -hmm. And so what I like to do is like, let's say you have a service. Let's say you have pest control. Okay, now I can go and I can advertise pest control. And again, they're going to have their arms crossed. They're going to be like, why is this guy better than this guy? Why is this better than that? And you're going to get in the war of pricing and the war of, you know, uh, reviews and things like that. And what I like to do is I like to stand out. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I look at what problems will be solved. Mm -hmm. For example, when I moved here to Florida, uh, our grass started dying. And I'm like, dude, I really don't want to replace 60,000 square feet of grass. Yeah. It does not sound fun. And so our grass starts dying and this guy comes over and he's like, chinch bugs. And I'm like, what the heck is a chinch bug? And he's like, well, it's this little bug and here's how he comes up. And he showed me how it worked. And I'm like, boom, whatever it costs a month, you're our pest guy. Yeah. There yeah, you go. Yeah. So notice if I had three guys at the door and they were like, I have better spray and I come on weekends and I have a ladder or whatever, I'm going to be like, I don't care. The chinch bugs are down there. Your ladder is irrelevant. You, I just don't like you because of the way you, you dress and you, I just, whatever, right? Um, and instead, what you do is you could go on Google, you could go on YouTube, and you could go in your demographic. I'd say Central Florida, just get people looking up chinch bugs. Yeah. Or just get people looking up dying grass. Yes, like, huge. No advertisers do that. Yeah, huge what you just said there. And this kind of goes back to like the bigger question of content marketing, right? Uh, you mm -hmm. as a service-based business, whether you're this, uh, whether you're this uh, um, uh, pest control, uh, whether you're a certified financial planner, a business coach, a health coach, right? People are looking to, to have their problems solved. That's why they're calling an expert. And rather than positioning yourself as the hero, right? We're number one best prices in town. What you really want to be doing is, is positioning yourself as the knower and solver of problems, right? You are the assister. You are the, you are the helper in making someone else's life better. You are the assistant, the guide to someone else who's the hero, right? And too many companies, great building, by the way, uh, great building. Uh, as the business owner, you got to think of yourself more as the guide and less and less of the hero, right, in the marketing story that you're telling people um, on the web. Now, 
Um, so you've chosen a customer, and if you guys have more questions on that, please ask them in the comment section below. You've chosen your customer, and 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 now you're about to to create sales copy, right? It's like, okay, this is the customer I want to go after. Maybe it's like, uh, let's just say homeowners in, in 92072, whatever, 90210, right, is, is the area. Now what? Uh, do you just start making video ads? Do you just start writing blogs? What's the next step in that process? Well, what you want to do is you want to target their number one need up front, okay. right? So if I have a demographic and I say I want uh, 18 to 25-year-olds that want sports cars, okay? That's gonna be a different message than if I get middle-aged people who want minivans. Right. right. Right, totally different. So like if I'm gonna go for the minivan people, what am I gonna go for? Boom, safety, yeah. that's all they care about. Yeah. Go for the young guys, they want fast, cool, you know, that kind of stuff. Right. Um, so if I go for safety, you can pre-frame your marketing in a way to where you take them and you get them to think. Because what we're doing is we're controlling the way people think. And one thing I learned um, through recovery was uh, the mind's like a lens and you get what you focus on, right? And, and what it taught us in recovery is like, okay, instead of thinking about this, direct it somewhere else and that's where your mind's gonna go. Now, what does that have to do with marketing? Well, your customer's mind is like a lens as well. Mm -hmm. And you can actually focus it where you want, right? If I say right now, don't think of a pink elephant, Everyone's thinking of a pink elephant. Pink right? elephants on parade. Exactly. Or like, you know, a green giraffe or something like that. Um, and you think of that. So with your words, you want to paint a picture in their mind, right? I want to paint the picture of the desired outcome. Yeah. If you guys want more customers, then what you want to do is this. And it's going to look like at the end of the road, I want you to imagine your bank account full your customers loving you, the feeling you walk in the door and say, honey, we got $100,000 worth of sales today. Yeah. Honey, we got this. Your wife is going to be patting you on the back and kissing you every step of the way because of the sales you're going to make. Mm -hmm. Just imagine what it's going to do with your business. And you start to frame it this way and you focus on the desire they want, right? And you say, hey, imagine what would happen if your family was safe, right? They show pictures of the car getting in a crash and it's like, this is what's, this is what's going to happen if you're safe, right? If you got the Volvo, this is what's going to happen. Exactly. Right? And it frames it in a way that's going to work. What I want to do is I want to frame you to the solution, but far too many salespeople, they start with the objection and they're like, well, if you want this, well, I know you probably don't want to spend that much. Well, you know, there's a lot of choices, but I think, and instead of doing that, you want to come out and you want to talk about the solution and you want to say, look, I'm going to have people banging down your door to buy your house. Yes. They're going to be here on Wednesday yes. at 10. This is how they're going to come in. Yes. Do you want to do this? And by the way, when you get the offers, if it doesn't say the number you like, I'm gone. It doesn't cost you nothing. Yeah. Boom. Sign here. Right. And you do the things where you're painting the picture of the end result. Um, also, do the research of looking for the hidden results. For example, when buying cars, one of the things that people like is their dignity with their trade-in, right? And you can actually say, hey, look, instead of, oh, your car's a piece of junk, I'm going to give you 500 bucks for it. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? Your car's pretty good. We're going to give you two grand for it yeah. and then make it up somewhere else. Because, I mean, you as a husband, you know, if you come home with a new car and your wife's like, cool, what'd you get for the minivan? And you're like, eh, 40 bucks. She's going to be like, <laughs> oh, and, oh and buddy, buddy, um, I know there's a guy who's taller and buffer that would have gotten 50 and you're going to be like, Oh, that sucks. You know, that sucks. I'm like, yeah, is he in the uh, closet right now? He's not in the shower right now. Is he? I, <laughs> exactly. I, why would well, you say, dirty, why would you, you know? say such a thing? <laughs> yeah. You know, and you make, you make uh, some, some great points. I want to go back to uh, something you just mentioned about the before state and the after state, because this is probably one of the, the pillars of sales that, that changed everything for me is really painting the picture of the before state. Where are you now? Look, uh, Marcus, let's be real. Your grass is dying. Um, everything that you're trying is not working, and you're about ready. You're about ready to own uh, 60,000 square feet of patchy dirt, okay? let's let's. That's where you're at now. Now, here's the thing. Um, I've got a chinchilla bug spray 
uh, addresses your problem. And in about six weeks, sir, um, you're going to have the greenest grass you've ever seen. Uh, you're going. It's going to. It's going to crunch when you step on it. And I'll tell you, even on the hottest day, it's going to be nice and cool to your feet because you got healthy grass, healthy roots, and you're finally on a system that that isn't feeding these bugs. You know what I'm doing there is I'm taking you from the before state to the after state. And I don't see a lot of service-based professionals uh, doing this Yes, I see a lot of this sort of like noodle nose selling or jellyfish selling, right? No spine. It's it's just kind of like, if you're interested, you know what I mean? Uh, you'll, you'll spend 30, 45 minutes with somebody and then your closing words is, uh, and if you're interested in something like that, then we can, you know, we can look at, uh, you know, the next step and it, and it just comes off um, as poor, uh, as, as a poor close. You and I were talking on Instagram about avoiding those those word killers, those words that you use that that sound jellyfish and don't move the the sale forward. Uh, talk to us about preframing and how preframing uh, puts you in a position to ask stronger questions. Cool. Yeah. So preframing, um, a lot of people do this with what's known as blind copy. Now, blind copy is kind of like a gray hat thing where what you do is your copy is all about the problem, right? They tell me all about my grass, how my grass is dying, how that's a symptom of uh, the ecology of Florida and you're actually right. going to ruin the climate and all this stuff and they're going to drill it home and then they'll be like, I have the solution for you. Click here to buy it, right? And you just say the solution is going to do this. Um, a lot of people do that with blind copy. You'll see that with uh, money-making products. A lot of them will come through and they'll say what this product isn't what this isn't going to do, yeah. um, things like that. And then they point to the solution and you don't have any clue what the thing is. Right. Now, I don't like that. I actually like to say this is what the product is mm -hmm. because one, I mean, I think people should know what they're buying. Um, and two, buyer's remorse. Like you're going to have a lot of buyer's remorse over something you don't know what it is. Um, so what I like to do is I like to preframe by walking people through the problem and tell a story. Okay. A lot of people forget that the best sales tool of all time is telling a good story. Right. Hands down. If I tell you a story, uh, that's what you're going to remember. Right. I tell you, I say, look, when I first started, I had 60 bucks in my account. I was broke. And here's what I did. Right. I know how you feel. People want to know how they want to know that you feel how you, they feel. Yeah. Bingo. Where they've been. I've been where you're at. Um, this is why you look at politics and you can have a politician who says nothing that gets elected. And it's like, well, why? Well, because he said he felt like they feel that's it. I feel right. like you feel. Elect me. Okay. Guy could be a total whatever. You know what he. <laughs> but um, that's the fact, right? That's a fact. He's, he, did, he said it better than the others. Right. He sold better than the others. Um, and that's what we have to look at. If you can describe your customer's problem better than they can, yes. you got to sell. Oh, my gosh. That's such a huge bingo. All right. So we just wrote, we just wrote a piece yesterday. It's a new opt in called the perfect video the perfect business video template and i just finished writing the draft last night in fact if you guys would like to see the pre-draft um go ahead and write um uh write sales in the comment section right now write sales in the comment section i'll go back and i'll send you guys the link where you can um you can check it out but in that template uh, we say the exact same thing. Like the the better that your description of the problem matches the customer's reality, the more rapport you're going to build, and the the bigger chance of virality that video is going to have because people resonate. They go, "Oh my gosh, he's speaking directly to me." And this is much more effective, I think, than the "we can serve anybody who has." pain at any time right you know what i mean uh marcus with like this sort of like and i see this a lot from like uh certified financial planners is, is a big example because we work with a lot of these guys real estate agents uh, i'll say well what do you specialize in as a real estate agent it's like well i, I could service i could sell home to anybody right oh mm -hmm. uh, okay but what what's the niche what's the market that you really like anybody everybody right and and then your marketing comes out like i can help you buy or sell a home and it's like thanks pal right? There's no, it doesn't pull at my heartstrings. There's no identifying with me other than you want to sell my home for 3% commission, right? Yeah. But what if you were to, to reframe that message as, hey, look, your kids are getting into high school. 
your house is bursting at the seams. You probably got shelves on shelves, right? Trying to manage everything. It's time for a new house. But but time before you get a new house, you got to sell this house, right? And which do you do? Which do you do first? Who do you even talk to? Is there an expert in that? Look, if you're if you're feeling those kinds of feels, uh, I know exactly what you're talking about, and I want to share with you the 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 same day home move in process, right? Mm -hmm. That can get you exactly what you need in life. But you understand what, what? I'm saying? Yeah, and I would take it a step further um, because you look at it and it's like, how many people come to me or search the internet for their house is too small? Right. No one. Huge. What they do is Big they search deal. for other prices. So what you do is you look at it and you say, okay, well, what are they dealing with? One, they're dealing with, they have a house they have to unload. Two, they need to get a bigger house. Yeah. So they're looking at it and they're like 6% gone. Yeah. But I, it doesn't even matter what I sell it for. Before I even, gone. yeah. And then depending on the market, you have to look at it and say, okay, well, how am I going to make it worth it? Because you got to get another loan now. So now you're back in a 30 year. Yeah. Um, and what I would do is I would frame it as to how to grow your wealth by, by serving your family's needs, right? How would you like to be able to actually grow your family's wealth while serving their needs by doing X, Y, and Z? And then you point out the different solutions. A lot of people come to me and they just want to buy a house just because it's bigger and it's better and yay, wonderful. But what they don't realize is there's actually leverage they have in their old house. Now, if you can afford to keep the old house, here's what you do. If you can't afford it, here's how to get the most dollar yeah. for the money. Yeah. For the new house, here's what you want to do if you get this rate and you actually contact the listing broker instead of you know going through a bunch of realtors or whatever, you could save this money. Um, and you, you educate them and you show them, hey, this is how to get this thing that is like, okay, we're kind of selfish. We want this thing and it's bad financially to, yeah. hey, it's a good move financially and it's not selfish because you're helping other people. Right. You know, if you can kind of frame it that way, um, that's the key, you know, and a lot of people look at um, the difference of framing things in terms of price. And what I like to do is I have a coaching where it's $77 a month mm -hmm. and people look at it and everyone has 77 bucks a month. I don't care who you are. Right. It's like if you want to make money, everyone's got it. And I know this, but I also know it's a tough sell because the continuity part, people don't want to sign up because they think you're going to take their credit card and like share it with a million close friends. Um, so what I do is I say, hey, look, for the less than the price of a cup of coffee a day, you can have this result. Yeah, beautiful. Are you really going to let two dollars and fifty cents a day stop you? Is that Starbucks really worth your family's future? Yeah. Like, is that seriously that that's what's stopping you here? Um, and you have to look at the reasons people don't buy. They don't buy, uh, they don't buy because they think you're full of it. First and foremost, like they don't believe you. Mm -hmm. Uh, second reason is they can't afford it, which is actually a myth. Okay. That the can't afford it thing is a myth. Anyone can find money for something they really want to yes, do. Yes. hundred percent true. Voice. You might have to live in it, but you can get one. Okay, so that's a myth, and you got to take that. And, and even if we can bring that even to a more real, like in a more realistic expectation, right? They can afford your two hundred dollar a month chiropractic service. Uh, they can afford. They can afford your hundred and fifty dollar breakfast shakes, right? Is the pain, is the pain, uh, uh, worth the expenditure? Because that's what it comes down to. Is it worth it to them? And at the end of the day, if your sales presentation did not stand out, if you did not resonate with them, if you came in like happy, smiley, you're going to love this product so much because I'm a salesman, you know, and you're going to love it, you know, and it's all about you and your product. Um, you're going to find them saying things like, I, you know, I can't afford it or not at this time. When in reality, what they're really saying is, I don't like you. I don't trust you. I don't believe what you're providing me uh, is going to solve my problem. And this is a big, this is the thing that I have with, you know, the clients that we work with is, oh, it wasn't a good lead, right? Or it wasn't a good appointment. Uh, and you've got to ask yourself, you, you know, was that customer really prepared for the sales pitch when you brought them in? Was was there a place where where they're like, yes, I'd like to take the next step? So I want to talk to you about that, Marcus. Is is you know you're working with this customer and you're sort of nurturing them with this content. How do you know when to start the close? Uh, well, it's it depends on the person. So you're going to have someone come in and you're going to lay out your whole thing. Now, instead of just pitching, educate them. Talk to them. Like as a salesman, I should only care about what's best for you. Okay. And luckily with the internet, you can get paid on whatever you sell. So it's yeah. like. Hey, if you buy something else, I'm still going to get paid. Right. I might as well talk about the best centers. And if you're really going out there and you're like, hey, dude, you know what? 
right now is probably not the best time to sell your house. I, if I'm honest with you, I'm sorry, but that that's the fact, right? Yeah. And, and show them and say, hey, but you might want to look into a refi option. Rates are low. Um, and be flexible, right? So what you should do, like when you were talking about um, going on the thing and it's not a good lead and all that, your lead should be sold by the time you get to your pitch. Bingo. Okay, they, they should be, boom, I'm, I'm ready to get it. I will go um, one step further. They should be asking you. They should be like, when can you come down here? Uh, like, oh, well, yep. what's what's it going to take, Owen, to get to get this started? You know, when I when I first got started in sales, uh, it was it was like, hey man, you want to be you want to be uh, an order taker, man. You just want to be an order taker, and like we'd walk around like we were order takers. But that is something you earn, right? When you have this great rapport with your customers, and you're not even asking closing questions anymore, right? At this point, you're just sort of explaining the product, and you're sort of you're sort of you know bringing them to a place of uh, yeah, installation can happen within five days, um, you know, and and so. Um, uh, it's pretty quick, you know, and you're you're almost not asking for the sales, so they can go well. Well, when can we schedule that? <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? Like, uh, you want to get them to a place where they're saying, "Come over here and close me." And I feel a lot of time, Marcus, and maybe you can relate to this. I'm ranting a little bit here, but what happens is. I was just training my sales uh, guy on this yesterday, Jason Jackson. I was saying, look, when they say, when they keep saying things like, okay, great, I love it, right? They're self-closing at that point, right? So now yeah. it's like, great, let me just go grab the, uh, the order form and we'll get this thing started. You never had to ask for the sale. They just kept saying, great, wonderful. You know what salespeople do is they go, well, well, if you're interested, then we can just, can we just, would you like to buy from me? It's like, dude. They've been saying that for 10 minutes because we're uncomfortable with closing questions. Any thoughts on that, Marcus? Am I way off base or do you see that happening as no, well? No, no, no. That's, that's totally what it is because what happens is you want to have a path in mind that you want the customer to go down. Like yeah. this is your game. It's yours. Like the thing is, is when it comes to selling in person, in print, whatever, it all comes down to your pride and your ego. That's yeah. it. You're sitting there and you're like, I'm going to feel like crap if they say no. I'm going to go home with my tail between my legs and I'm going to be like, oh man, that sucks. And I'm going to go try to do it again tomorrow. Yeah. And the hardest sale to make is the one you have to. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The desperate sale. Sales, <laughs> yeah. If I don't have to, it's like, dude, what the heck, you know? Um, and we look at it and it's like, lead them down the path. Like lead them down to naturally point at your thing. You want to be like, hey, you know, doesn't this suck? Doesn't it suck to feel this way? Well, yeah. here we go. Here's the solution. Here we, yeah. we're, we are signing up. We're doing this because that's what's best for you. Do you want it in green or do you want it in blue? Would you like to sell your house on the market now or is next weekend better? Right. right? Give them the question that's like a choice between, you know, do you want to pay me money or do you want me to pay me money with quarters? Yeah. You know, yeah, quarters, exactly. But, it's like, well, uh, you, you know, did we want to do the, the, did we want to do 10 grand or we want to do um, the five payments of two? Which one is more, exactly. uh, more like, which one would you choose? Right. If you were going to, yeah. if you had to make a decision today, right. You ask these questions and you get, you, you, you can see it in the, in the facial expressions and everything. I love it. Uh, let's talk about the sales letter. And by the way, we're getting so much great stuff. Gracie Ruth is saying, um, uh, I feel like I'm learning a lot from this Facebook live. Uh, Willie Rodriguez is saying a lot of good info. Keep it going, baby. Uh, the softer side is saying, uh, the softer side, what do you do, by the way? I'd love to know. Softer side is watching us on YouTube and says, uh, the dreaded words after a pitch, you've given me a lot to think about. Marcus, how do we handle objections? How do you, we talked about it a little, but like, how do you handle uh, these objections when you get them in your clothes? You subtly bring them up before the clothes. <sighs> Dude, where did you yeah. come from? This guy is on fire. <laughs> Like he knows all the things. Okay, so you 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 subtly bring them up before. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That means you go into your market and you find out what they want. Now okay. with the internet, if you don't know what your market wants, thinks, feels on a daily basis, you're not paying attention. Mm -hmm. Like if you go to Amazon, let's say you're selling a camera, read the reviews, see what people say about it. Uh, if you're doing solar, right? Let's say you install solar on people's houses. Read the questions, go to a forum, look at it. They'll be like, oh, you know, like for me, I'd get solar, but I'm like, really? It's going to take 500 years to pay off a $40,000 solar right. thing on my house, right? So that's an objection. So you would say up front, hey, I realize that a lot of people 
think this, or you might think that this is going to take a long time to pay off. But there's actually five different government grants or whatever they call them from the government. I only pay money to the government. I don't get any back. Um, <laughs> yeah, high five are, right there, brother. And what are these things um, that will give you a break, right? Do the research. Find out for them, right? The, the key is being knowledgeable in things they don't know and knowing like weird, random little facts that's going to help them. Like weird, random facts in your market will help leaps and bounds, right? Like what's, um, what's the solar going to save you? What are the government kickbacks you get for solar? Right. Um, what about installation? Well, hey, check this out. It actually adds a barrier to your roof so your roof lasts longer. Right. Know that stuff. I don't know if it's true or not, but know that. Right. Right. Know the kind of things that are going to help. Um, and then make it easy for them, right? Like look at the objection up front. Uh, I don't want to invest in this. Or I've bought so many things like this before right. and it hasn't worked. Right. Um, to overcome that, you say, look, you know, I know there's a lot of things you can look at out there, but I want to give you something that makes sense. I'd, I'd, you know, I'd kind of take on his appeal. And, and what I noticed is that I was copying people, right? In the very beginning, it's like when I was 22, 23, you know, really learning how to sail. And it's like, if he crossed his legs, I'd cross my legs. And I was like, oh my gosh, he's totally caught on that I'm mirroring him. Uh, and then, But you get better at it over time, right? If you're a hyper guy, I'm kind of a more interact, like hyper inter in your face kind of guy. But if I'm dealing with a lower, like a, a more mellow client, I want to bring my mellow down or I want to bring my energy down but still, I want to lead them, right? I want to lead actually, them where I want to go. I actually have this behind for my webinars. Uh, we lost him. Do we, is that, he there? Yeah, let's, yep, you, uh, for your webinars, go ahead. Yeah, so when I'm on my webinar, I got this sign so that I'm like, okay, I need to remember to slow down because I talk fast, right? And I realized that That's cool. you can actually take people – on a roller coaster with your words. Yeah. Right. You want to take through and I can I can I could go like this and I could talk fast and then I could say, you know, if you want to understand this right, I can teach you how to sell your house really quick. Right. And a lot of people out there, you're gonna get these slick talking salesmen and they're gonna come up there and all they care about is their commission. They actually don't care how much you get for your house. Right. They just want it sold. And what I'm going to do is, I, and you can take them on this and you could lead it high, faster and slower and you're in control. And if you look at it that way, like I can dictate exactly how a sales presentation is going to end up. Yeah. Exactly. Huge. Just here you go. Huge points um, there. Joe Eves is making a great point on YouTube as well. He says, also asking questions that they'll say yes to um, mm -hmm. so that there are, they already have yes momentum in, uh, in getting to the sale. I believe in that. I believe that's like, I wouldn't even call it salesman trickery, right? It's, it's really, that goes into that helping, right? That goes into that helping phase. Hey, Media Zeus logging in. Brian White, great to see. If you got questions on sales or selling for your local or service-based business, be sure to ask us in the question in the comment section below. You know, because you, you're asking him, so this would help you, right? Yes. Uh, this is at a price you can afford, right? Yes. So we're ready to move forward then, right? Yes, right? You've got this yes momentum moving into the sale. And this is how you help people. You bridge the the the, the divide between the before state and the after state. Some huge, uh, huge stuff here. I want to ask you, uh, Marcus, about sales letters and, and writing a sales pitch on a web page, right? That's going to help these companies bring people in from their internet assets. What is a sales letter and how do you make a great sales letter? Good. Uh, sales letters. I love sales letters. I like writing sales letters. Um, it's a lot more elusive than people think. Like it's got this weird stigma behind it. Um, if you want to learn about sales letters, I would study Gary Halbert, hands down. Uh, we'll give you a warning. Don't listen to it with the kids are around. He's kind of got an interesting mouth. It's cool. I mean, teach yourself. If you're into but, that you kind know. of thing, if you're into that kind of thing, yeah. if you're into that. Um, but what he does is he talks about number one, knowing your customer, knowing the problem and painting a word picture in their mind. Mm -hmm. uh, and you go through and you say, Hey, what's my headline going to be? Headlines are most important. What's the point of the headline mm -hmm. to get them to read the first sentence? What's the point of the first sentence to get them to read the next one mm -hmm. and the next one and the next one. It's like a ladder. 
and you get them to go through it. Uh, the way that you do this is with stories and what's known as the dual readership path, right? If I'm honest with myself, and I'll bet with Owen too, um, we don't read a whole sales letter. I remember way long ago, I would print them and I'd read them only yeah. so I'd learn about sales letters. Yeah. But yeah. now I'm like, yeah. just scroll down, let's Skimming. see what happens. We skim. Exactly. And the dual readership path is where you have your main bulk of paragraphs and then you have your headlines that say the same thing and bring the same conclusion condensed. Yeah. Right. So they're going through and it's like, here's how to uh, get more done in less time. You know, Bob, I struggled with procrastination, blah, blah, blah. Here's what I did. Blah, 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 blah. Are you struggling with procrastination? Here's what you need to do. These three steps will help you. Yeah. And so I was going on and I was struggling, blah, blah, blah. Big, bold headline. Um, this is the tip that changed my life. Yes. Boom, boom, boom. Yes. More story. Um, you know, uh, I found that motivation didn't work. I listened to all the tapes. I bought all the stuff. No matter what happened, I couldn't get ahead. I couldn't get things done. I just sat there like a bump on a log and read Facebook all day. Yeah. And I wanted to get things done. And then you bring it down. And so you have that dual readership path going through and you're bringing up stories. You're telling them, you're educating them. And then when it gets time to the end, one of the big keys is instead of asking for the order, just show them how to order. Here's how to get started today. Where it says name, I under, you, don't, you don't need to say this, but I understand that they know name is where their name goes. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I show it so that they see me going through it. Put your name. When it says email, put a good one because we're going to send you your passcodes. Yes. So you want to put a good one. Yeah. Um, the credit card. Look, this thing's totally secure. You're going to put your credit card in here. Here's how it's going to work. After you fill out the form, make sure you check your email, right? And that pre-frames it. After you buy this today, instead of, if you think you, if you might want to perhaps get it, hey, after you buy this, you're going to feel so good because on the thank you page, there's this downloadable thing I didn't even tell you about, but I yes. can give it to you free. Wow. You know, Bingo. Like Bingo bango. Uh, that's huge. You know, the language that you use, um, <laughs> if you decide to move forward, puts in their mind they may not move forward right it's no you're at this point you're only speaking to the person it's almost like you're you're bending space and time right you're actually yeah. speaking to the person who already bought so you're saying to that person hey after you buy the sale you're imagining them on your thank you page hey after yep. you uh, after you purchase this you're gonna see uh, this this thing and you're gonna love it because you're gonna show you know and it keeps going you know in that's you're putting them in this place where they've already bought and you're in the after state with them this is huge is keeping them in the after state we got a question coming in on Facebook from Alex Young Alex is saying what if they mention your competitor by name do you slice and dice the competition Marcus, before you answer that, Alex, I'd love for you to tell us what you do. What is your profession in the comment section? And we'll, we'll keep an eye out for that. Marcus Campbell, what do we do when uh, they mention the competitor? Um, I usually just talk about me and why this is superior or why it's better. Yeah. Um, you don't want to get in a cat and mouse game of like, oh, he's $5. Oh, he's 10 Oh, he's going to come out on right. Sunday. I only come out on Monday. You want to preframe your offer as the solution. So like in your mind, huge. you've already lost if you're thinking about a competitor. Yeah. You've already lost. You're like, well, you know, there are no competitors to me. Why? Because I got my people. I got them in front of me. And, you know, it doesn't matter what else they do. That's right. They're going to buy other stuff anyway. That's right. Um, so what I want to do is I want to put myself in a position of teaching them, right? How many other companies are going to teach the customer about the chinch bugs on the grass? Right. None. And like, seriously, I was sitting there. My wife was in the house. Uh, kids came home from school as he was there. And this guy's just trying to sell me. And I'm like, dude, cards on the table, bro. You're yeah. sold. What do you, you know what? You want me to count pennies? I mean, oh, yeah. come on. Oh, yeah. um, and he's talking about competitors and he's talking about this. And if your customer brings it up, find something that's unique to you. Yes. Right. Yes. Or say, oh, is my competitor here right now? Yeah. Yeah. Who's the one talking? Who, who took the time to talk to you? Yeah. And you know what? And, There's and if those are great lines and and you know what there's there's also like an essence of knowing that when they say that when they say well what about xyz company john or or what uh, oh and what about your your competitor you think in your own mind well they're my competitor's not even here right now you know so think about that you have their attention 
uh, and how you handle that question is is going to matter uh, is going to matter a lot. I love Marcus what you're talking about. Um, uh, are you taking off, Melissa? Everybody, Melissa's got to go, which means I've got to produce the rest of the show uh, on my own. Yeah, she's saying good luck. The buttons are five feet away, uh, but we're gonna have a great great job today. Uh, we're gonna have a great show. Um, going back so that I can cut this part out and use it in 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 a, in a replay. When when your customer mentions the competitor to you, right? You have this ability to now become a really noble person, and 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 speak you know lightly of your competitor. Like you don't have to kill them, but but you go back to the uniqueness of your product, right? And Marcus, that's what you were talking about. Here's a quick example. I got my start in in uh, selling carpet and flooring uh, in a retail flooring store. And what I noticed is that, you know, we would have like a like a Mohawk carpet, right? A Mohawk carpet brand. But we would have a special fleck, right? Ours would have three red dots, three red flecks in the in the pattern. Now you could go to Home Depot across the street and they would have a carpet that looked almost exactly like it, but their fleck was different. They had three green flecks in it. Almost identical, but in this way, you know, we were able to say, oh, well, Home Depot doesn't even have this super special red fleck three brand. Like, so if you like this carpet, you know, I mean, you're, there's nowhere else for you to find it. Right. And you can either continue, like, I mean, your choices are like, yeah, we can continue. You can keep going to carpet places, place after place after place. They're going to want to measure. They're going to want to show you samples. And you're going to say, what about this fleck? And, oh, I didn't like it as much as Owen's fleck. And you're back here in three weeks, still no carpet. Now my price is twice as high. Right. Yeah. Is that what you want to do? Or do we see so again, find a way to make your product unique. What's your red fleck offer? Right. That nobody else matches. And maybe uh, maybe it's because you offer an additional consulting. Maybe you offer an additional Facebook group on the side. Maybe you offer a mastermind on the side. Well, hey, look, I know that this other guy has this great spray. It's going to make your grass look familiar. But uh, does he provide um, a weekly, uh, a monthly Q&A with the customers where you can log in and ask your questions to a lawn care expert? Um, mm -hmm. uh, does he have a private Facebook group where you can handle all your customer issues so you don't have to get on the phone if you don't want to? Uh, right? These are the unique selling aspects of your business. I wouldn't crush your competitor um, ever, oh. but I, I would I – would, um, I would take a leadership approach there and 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 uh, walk them through why you're better in no uncertain terms. They have to feel like if they walk out without your stuff, they're they're losing big time. Another thing too is um, when looking at that, you can actually tell them and mean it. Like say, hey, look, you know, I'm here to help you as a salesman, and I realize if this guy can provide it cheaper. Yeah. And money is your issue. You know what? I, go for it. However, if your issue is being able to have something that lasts longer, longer warranty, whatever your plugins are, um, point to those. Yeah. Right. Because what you just did is you just eliminated them by being the cool guy. Yeah. You're like, hey, you know what? Hey, I know you can get this Toyota down the street for 16.5. Yeah. Right. I, ours is a little bit more. Now, let me tell you why. Right. When you go in there and you go and try to get your oil changed, they're going to look at you and, and try to rip you off or whatever. Don't say rip you off, but, you know, say they're going to they're going to do this. They're going to charge you for it. We actually give you six years of oil changes free and we're going to give you this warranty that lasts longer. That means when you go to sell it, here's what's going to happen. Yeah. Right. And, and position it in their mind to where it's like, hey, you're the customer. You can do what you want. And I understand that. Yeah. And if they get that psychologically, they're going to be like. Owen cares about me so yeah. much, he'll send me to get the blue speckled carpet cheaper. He cares about me. Where do I sign? Yeah. That's it. You're the right? guy. And, and, You're the guy. Yeah, and in exactly. this economy more than ever, folks, in this economy more than ever, people want that personal touch. They want to know that you care about them. I signed on to a coaching program. You know, uh, I signed on to a coaching program that uh same same i mean she was like i'm gonna take care of you i'm gonna nurture you. you you know she's like don't feel like this is a group thing she's like feel like this is one-on-one -on -one with a bunch of other people and i'm like oh my gosh that's exactly what i want i want that mentorship uh sign the paperwork and then i almost never heard from her again it was 100 percent thrown in a bucket with all the other crabs and it was up to me to to, to kind of get this thing and that's i guess it's fair 
That's what was on paper, but it's not what got me to sign the deal. What got me to sign the deal was that extra, like, why should I do this now? Uh, conversation was her answer to that. Marcus, how do we avoid chargebacks, buyer remorse, uh, so that after they purchase, they're not coming back to us and returning the item or complaining on social media? Okay, real quick, I want to touch on that last point first. Um, a good thing for competitor is from the Tommy Boy movie. If you remember <laughs> when he goes to the guy and he's, why is there not a guarantee? There's got to be a guarantee on the box. <laughs> and he's talking about yeah. the competitor has the guarantee. And he says, oh, well, you can call me even if I'm at home. And then he says, well, hey, check this out. Why would someone give you a guarantee? Because all they know is they sold you a guaranteed piece of crap, right? <laughs> and he explains it in a way and it works, right? Um, so, yeah. I had to bring that up. We had a Tommy Boy. I love Tommy Boy, and and you could you you could learn so much uh, from from Tommy Boy. Uh, there's so much to learn from Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, Boiler Room. Some great some great sales uh, some great sales videos. But I think you have to be consistent, right? You have to deliver. Uh, and I believe that there is a lot of value in the post sale nurture, right? In in once someone purchases from you, and now reaffirming, even if it's just with three to five emails, right? What, what turns a lot of people off is when this great salesman comes, develops relationship, they sign the deal, they never see the salesperson again. I feel like that's deadly, right? You really well, have to be in a place, even if you're the head doctor, right? If you're the doctor uh, uh, and uh, Cairo and you sell the patient, but then they only see you five seconds and you do an adjustment, right? I think you need to make more of an effort in the very beginning, especially to transition them over to your staff, to transition them over to the fulfillment team because the consumer doesn't always understand the difference between sales, marketing, and fulfillment, right? You're supposed to sell and leave and go find another client. But yeah. if, if that client feels burned, right? They've got three days to rescind. In, some, in California law says that any home improvement, you get three days to cancel. So we don't even process orders until three days, you know? Um, and, uh, and online, they're going to return the product. They're going to want their product and you're going to have to pay for shipping twice. Marcus, what are some things we can do to avoid that? Uh, what I do is take care of your customer. Um, try to do something personal. Like yeah. imagine if you took 30 seconds and you called them and, and here's the deal. Okay. This is the thing. The, the salesman sells the stuff and then he leaves. Yeah. And then, you know, whatever, good experience, bad experience, doesn't matter. Is it easier for that customer to do a U-turn and come back and say, hey, man, would you like to do floor upstairs yeah. with your carpet? Or is it easier to go to the next house and try to sell? Right. I guarantee you it's easier to sell another person yeah. if you treat them right. And for me, um, we have mixed reviews with online stuff. You always get reviews of some sort, right? If you've sold more than nine things. Um, and for me, what I try to do is I try to take care of people in a way that's like, look, our thing is you get the right answers, right? You might not get 24 seven support, but you're going to get me to check out your site. Not some guy who doesn't know what a website is, right? Right. Um, those kind of things work. And also remember that nurturing your customers, is going to be your lifeblood, hands down. Like Huge. They're going to buy more. They're going to come back for more stuff. Um, I knew a car guy years ago. He sold to like generations of families. He's like, I sold them a Model T back in the day and my granddaddy's <laughs> Like, why? Because you took care of them and they knew. And maybe they even paid more. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's Price is not always – I get people all the time. They say, Marcus um, – isn't it easier to sell something that's like nine bucks versus a thousand? No. Right. Think about this. Right. You go out there, you try to sell a Toyota. Okay. And you're like, this Toyota is uh, 20 grand. Okay. It's got an airbag. It's got this. It's got a warranty. Okay. The guy's like, well, over there it was 19.5. Over here it was, you try to sell a Ferrari. They're like, it's red. And I accidentally hit the key over here. So it's got a little nick. <sighs> but it's $50,000 more than the MSRP. Yeah, well, I want a Ferrari, yeah. so I'm going to get it. Yeah, yeah. Right? And, and that's the thing is don't assume your customer feels like you. They don't. They don't feel like you. They're not sitting there, you know, uh, doing the things you do, thinking the things you think. They're totally different. And if you assume that they just want the lowest price, uh, the best deal, oh. the cheapest oh. stuff. Killer. You know, You're going to kill yourself with that. 
You're going to kill, especially because it's not true. You know, especially in this day and age where so many of us, especially all those of us watching this, if you're watching this streaming on YouTube, streaming on Facebook, or, or maybe the replay, um, you, you probably have a smartphone, like a high-end $1,000 computer in your pocket. Um, you've probably got um, a two-car garage, right? Even if it's a rental, you've, you're renting two-car garages. Money is, is we're blessed, right? We're in a place of privilege. Um, so money is not always the thing. In fact, in most cases, it's, it's I want to have like a go-to expert in the space. So, you know, we like, for example, we pay um, a quarterly fee for our pest control guy. And mm -hmm. the reason we pay that is because um, the guy was just uh, nerdy as he could be, uh, right, uh, coming in here and was just all about like, this is the bubble spider and a bubble spider will die if you, and this is the brown widow and they're not as dumb. And so my wife's like, dude, come down here every 90 days. I can ask you all my bug questions. Um, we want an expert in our corner, right? I've got clients that pay me retainers and don't even use my service, but they, they want to be able to ask me questions. They want to have a YouTube, a video expert in their corner so that when they have questions, they can go to that person. If you're a Cairo, right? If you're a certified financial planner, how can you position yourself, right? To have this advantage, right? Mm -hmm. The, 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 the Owen video advantage, the Marcus Campbell advantage, the Joe Eves advantage, right? Where you're offering additional support via email. Uh, most of the case people won't even ask this from you, right? Mm -hmm. But you provide it in a Facebook group and some type of leveraged environment. Notice I'm not talking about one-on-one -on -one for free. It's not what I'm talking mm -hmm. about, but a leveraged environment where you can offer something your competitors can't touch so that you can keep those sales and nurture your people once the sale is uh, is closed. Marcus Campbell, you are a wealth of knowledge. How do we follow you? How do we stay in touch with you uh, to continue to grow our business? Well, the main site is affiliatemarketingdude.com. You can get like a free toolbar thing there. Uh, and you can find out where to like follow us there. Um, so that's probably the best place. That's fantastic. Check them out right there, guys. We got some questions. You want to answer some questions with me before we uh, before sure. we jump off here today? Um, so <laughs> we're looking on Facebook here. My computer uh, froze for a minute, but we're back in here. Uh, we have a good question. It says, um, well, Ian Crump is saying we, uh, we have three guarantees, and one of our guarantees is you will always find someone cheaper. That's an interesting point, right? Hey, I guarantee you'll find you'll find a lower price. You want to find a lower price. There's there's definitely somebody who's going to cut corners. Um, any thoughts on the price objective? On the price objection? Uh, price objection. You point to the value of the product. Um, so you want to look at like what it's going to do for you. Yeah. Um, and what it's going to do for them, and what it's going to make them feel. People buy based on feelings, and then they back it up with logic. Oh, big Always. time. Right? Um, so if you look at that, it's like, I bought this because I wanted to feel this. Like no one buys a sports car to go fast. Cause you really can't go that fast. Like, there's laws, right? right, um, right. They buy a sports car. So people go, damn dude. And girls go, Ooh, Hey, he looks not like a, you know, weird guy. He is, he looks pretty good in that car or whatever it is. Um, that's what girls say. Yeah. People, that's what they say. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I have a regular car. So who knows? They're like, why is that guy who's five feet tall coming out of that? Tr oh, that truck's not that big. He's just short. Okay. Yeah, what's the what's uh, the step okay. stool for? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> the... <laughs> I can say uh, that we're friends. We're friends. Yes. I haven't grown since high school. So. Uh, um, but yeah, you know, with that, you you look at the feeling you provide because people will buy based on the feeling, and you say, "Do you want to feel better about this?" Uh, like a gym membership, right? Hardly anyone goes to the gym. Right. I think the last one I talked to, it was like ninety percent don't go. They had 4,000 people on the books, maybe 500 came in monthly. Um, and they keep their membership because they feel like they might change one day. Yes. Maybe one day. Like I, I know I have to have someone waiting there that's going to charge me if I don't show up or I'm not going to go. That's right. Um, but they buy that on a feeling. That's why everyone buys January 1st. Is there any difference between setting a goal January 1st and setting one today? You know, no. Yeah. 
That's that's a big that's, that's a big deal, and I think it's important for all of us business people to recognize sort of the ebb and flow of the culture is is I think it's what's going to keep you sort of stuck in your rut. Now I teach I mentor a, a, a group of young men on Wednesday nights, uh, and we talk about leadership and 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 we talk about how you want to schedule your life around quarters. Uh, financial years and things like this so that you can move along with the economy. But things like New Year's resolutions, these are arbitrary. These are designed to sell balloons and chocolates and, and bumper stickers and gym memberships, yep. right? Um, you know, you want to really challenge the world, start setting uh, Black Friday resolutions. Start setting fourth quarter resolutions, right? So October 1st comes and your 2019 goals are already written out. Maybe you spend, you know, the next 90 days revising, the, revising them. Um, but you know, waiting until January to, to set a goal, you know, set it in May, get off, get off the culture calendar, right. In a sense yeah. and, and move on your own beat. You'll find that you're getting uh, more and more, uh, results. Video Zeus is saying fat guy in a little coat. We love to see that. Uh, absolutely. Jeffrey, uh, uh, Jeff and high def is saying your experiences and expertise is your number one differentiator. Not a bad point, but I would go one step further and say the way you communicate, uh, your experience and expertise is going to be the number one, uh, differentiator. We talk a lot about packaging, uh, in our, in our group, um, and, and how you package the product, right? If you, I mean, I might have a great service, but if it's packaged poorly, if I deliver it poorly, it's not, it's not going to matter, uh, not going to matter, uh, too much. We had a great question come in from, uh, the apostle Tamar MacGyver. She says, what if you're providing counseling? How, how do you sell counseling? That's kind of a loaded question, but give us the, the quick synopsis. What are some tips, uh, Marcus Campbell, that you would give to somebody who's selling a service like counseling or consultation? Uh, first of all, I would disclaimer it. Um, be careful with these because depending on what you're doing, you want to have something in place legally to protect yourself. Good point. Um, with that said, uh, what I would do is I would point to the problem, point to the solution, uh, educate them. Right. Like if you have someone who's um, ADHD and you're like, hey, man, I know what it's like to feel like you. You're all hyper all the time um, and nothing seems to help. But what I found is there's several different things. What I call them is the three ADD pillars or whatever. Yeah. yeah Number yeah. one is what you eat. OK. What you eat is very important. There's 12 things I tell people not to eat. Number two is uh, mindset. Number three is this. And what I've found is that you can actually overcome this problem with these three things. Yeah. Now, the way that we do it is this. I could tell you all this stuff right now, but it's probably going to be overwhelming and it's probably going to make it worse because, hey, let's face it, you're here because you have the issue. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go through this eight-week, nine-week thing where we help you through this um, and educate them on how their mind works. Um, that's really important. Uh, for me, that's what helped when I was going through alcoholism. Uh, someone finally came out and said, hey, this is what's going on with your mind. You're not crazy. You're not having this stuff. Huge. This is what it's doing to Huge. you. Huge. And I was like, I'll go to whatever rehab you want. And I did um, because it made sense. Yeah. Right? It was like, hey, this yeah. is what's going on. And if you show them, hey, this is why you feel sad all the time. Yeah. And it's not your fault. Yeah. Because of this, this, and that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And one thing that I would give you as a counselor is empathy. Empathy for your market is going to close the deal better than pricing, better than sales letters, yeah. better than anything, yeah. you know. Uh, huge points there. And, uh, you, you know, empathy with leadership, I think, is huge, too. I've seen a lot of counselors, you know, sit on the same sit on the couch with their with their prospects, with their potential, um, uh, you know, mentees. And, and mm -hmm. you're almost now like a friend and you have to be careful yeah. of that. You have to empathize, but retain leadership, right? So that they mm -hmm. when you move them into that next level, they're, they're ready to, um, uh, they're ready to move with you, you know, and, and here's the other thing, uh, the apostle tomorrow, and maybe this is the big thing. This is where I want to plant my flag is you have mm -hmm. to have the tools in place online, uh, so that a customer that you've been speaking with, or maybe have never even met can make their decision uh, at one o'clock in the morning when you're sleeping, right? If you, what if what your customer is going to sit in bed, uh, lying awake and be like, you know what? I'm ready to lose this weight. I'm going to buy those shakes. I'm going to do the thing. I'm going to start counseling. I'm going to go to the chiropractor. I'm going to get my, my, my retirement plan. I'm going to get these guys today and they go to their phone and you have a website that says under construction, right? 
or you have a contact us form that has a phone number and an address, but you're closed, right? Mm -hmm. You have to be in a place that you've got to get started today link somewhere. I'm not saying it needs to be on your homepage, but maybe on your contact form, you've got a link that's like, hey, do you want to just get started today, right? Then boom, go here. You, you know, I would recommend like a $97 down payment or something. And, and then, and now, now the next day you wake up, you have a sale in your inbox. They got to go to bed knowing that they finally made a decision and it changes the game for your service based company. Think about those things. We got to go. I got another interview I've got to do. Marcus Campbell, thanks for joining us today. Uh, I hope we can do this again sometime. Sure thing. Guys, check out Marcus Campbell on YouTube. Follow him on Facebook. Marcus, I hope you'll engage in the comments. Maybe share some of your links, uh, and we'll pin them sure. to the top so that um, uh, uh, you can get there. Nick Nimmin logging in. Nick, it's good to see you, buddy. Uh, glad you uh, were able to join us. Says, your scene is looking so good. Thanks, my man. Uh, we're working on uh, Roger is saying it looks like an office. Wait, is it an office? Uh, kind of. You guys want to see it? Check this out. Let me just kind of show you guys what, what I'm doing here. And I'm staying plugged in. I got so many wires to cross. This is like deadly ground, deadly ground here. So boom, when we come out, when we come out of here, right, you're looking at sort of like a set. So it's designed to look like an office. You know, I got my iPhone there. I was streaming on Instagram for a while. And then I've got the, uh, the computer set up uh, over here. So now... Uh, I got to go. I got to click off on the thing, but great to be here with you guys. Join us again next week. Uh, can you even hear me? Type five in the comment section right now if you want to subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the big old subscribe button. We'll see you guys next week.